das war. Tatsa wie du war in ihm. War gut, was ja die Mai. First, I just want to explain why we asked you for this uh, interview. Uh, the idea is that I'm a businessman. And uh, we've been in, uh, in a core around Kailas in Tibet. We had a huge group of yogis. And we are trying to be also in, in yoga. And uh, 20 of them were businessmen of a good level, let's say. And I realized that people from business are also, also interested in spiritual growth, in, in yoga in general. And we realized we had a lot of talks. And we realized that we need some guidance from people who are in spiritual growth and at the same time in a, are efficient in life for a long time. And then I, I found out from Jyoti that you will be playing here and since we live here uh, in Brussels, I, I asked, is, is it possible to ask you questions about your spiritual life and how you combine it uh, together with the, with the social life? This is the idea, and that's why I'm in this uh, suit and so on. <laughs> Maybe you should give me the jacket. I can. <laughs> so we are talking about uh, business and yoga today, and how business can be implemented into yoga, and how yoga can, be, can go along with business. For business, at least for me, more or less clear what it is about. With yoga, I know that different people understand different things behind yoga, what yoga is. So what is your understanding of yoga? The, the understanding of yoga is that there is nothing to achieve. It's, it's, uh, it, the, the, all the whole thing about yoga is to bring us into a state where we are satisfied as we are. And then from that place we can do business or we can do whatever. But it has to begin with a space of inner peace for ourselves. Mm -hmm. If we don't have that, business just becomes money, money, money. Yeah. And then there's no enjoyment, there's no balance. Yoga gives balance so that we realize the most important thing is our own inner peace. And with that we are, can respond to our families in a different way, in a more loving way, to the people we work with in a more understanding way, more compassionate. This is, the, this is what yoga gives us. And, and in our case we are back to yoga, which means we our yoga is through music and through devotion. So it has nothing to do with money. We, we didn't in any way begin this to make any money. This was not our intention. We started in an ashram. Mm -hmm. We started singing and playing in an ashram because where there is no money. <laughs> so uh, the, the whole concept of our yoga is, again, it's a doorway into our own... Uh, because without my own inner peace, how can I look at the world and try and make it peaceful? It's impossible. So it's a, it's a different understanding, you know, with yoga. So. Mm, and it's also that there's no separation, you know, between work and life or, you know, mm. or that, that what, whatever you do, you know, even if it is if you're a banker and you're really only concerned with money as, as, a, as, as what, you, what you put your focus on, that you um, have an attitude within of, of love, of creativity, of oneness, and you realize that this, this is what I do in this world because this is needed, but it comes from a space of, 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 of a service, you know? Yeah. And okay. everything you do is like a service to the to the to the divine or humanity or whatever you want to call it, you know, existence or... Do I understand right that intention, which is behind what you do, is important then? Mm -hmm. Motive, yeah, motivation, motivation. yeah, yes. Yeah. So, because I know that in business, people are doing business, okay, even if it's not just for money, it's for the family, for example, or for some small circle of people which are around. And do you think that different motivation, for example, doing things for, as a service, as you said, uh, may bring more results to business as well. It will bring more results for your own heart, mm. but whether it makes you more rich, who knows? Okay. You it know? doesn't matter. But the fact <laughs> is, if you're happy and your family is happy, hey, 
you know. And, and uh, you know, because you know, many rich people are not happy. It doesn't make you happy. We now we know that. It's nice to have money, but it's not, it's very dangerous if you live your life for money. Mm -hmm. That's a dangerous, my, I know because I've, I have, my, even in my family. So I know that's a very uh, precarious way of living life because basically when you die, you can't take the money with you. Yeah. You know, all you can do is leave it for your family and they'll be fighting and squabbling about this part of mine and whatever. So, you know, it's not necessarily a good focus in your life. Much better to slow down, give yourself space, to do yoga, to, to sit quietly, to be with your family, really be with your family. Mm -hmm. You know, those things are most important, you know, and we learn as we grow older that when we're young, we want to make money, we want to be in power. But, you know, those days are, in a way, irrelevant now because the world and the planet is in so much trouble. Yeah. So much trouble. And if we just keep going, oh, I just want money, 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 while everything else is going crazy, people are starving, refugees can't eat. It's a terrible situation in the world. So we have to broaden our, our outlook now to save our families, to save our grandchildren. You know, it's not just about providing them with money. That was the, in the olden days when we needed, we ha you know, it was a, a different way. You needed to leave your family with something. But now it's, it's, it's different because we are, uh, there are different ob object ob objectives now. And that, that is to look globally at how can we help this humanity. If we want to survive, we have to look beyond making money, uh, sexual gra gratification, um, uh, power. All these things, they, they, they only be, they become less important on a global level because we want to take care of our families, we want to be happy in ourselves. Those uh, different incentives to to find those places, you know. And uh, Mitan, can you tell us a bit about your personal transformation then? Because I, we know that you've been in a rock band, and then th something has changed, and you started. Uh, you, as I know, you went to ashram, right? And then you started to do spiritual music. How was that? What were the important steps? Well. The first step was that I saw that uh, the life that I was living and the goals that I'd set myself were not very high. It was just about money, mm -hmm. just about recognition, mm -hmm. just about wanting to be seen as a rock musician and all those kind of... Um, when I realized there was more, and that, that's a whole other story, but I read a book and the book led me to uh, meditation and, and meditation led me to India and India led me to stopping thinking of myself as a musician. Mm -hmm. I stopped playing, no, no music. I just listened to the music in the ashram, which was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Music for the soul and the heart. I thought music was like, hey man, you know, and that's where, that's where that society, if you look at music in society, it's all about exciting the sexual energy or the emotion. You left me and you, you know, so, so when you hear real music that comes from the soul and it's just for meditation, you're into another world. So I learned that music is much more than just excitement or emotional. It's, it's when Deva sings, She's not an emotional singer. She, it's not an emotional, um, boo, boo. You know, she doesn't, she doesn't emote the mantras because it would be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Mantras are way beyond emotion. And that's where we learn to contact, contact a deeper level of communication. And, um, and that has led me to playing and, and just, being in service to the is energy that comes through me and Deva when we play the mantras. They are, see, mantras are not emotional. They're not, they don't describe any emotional thing. They are sound energy uh, formulas. They're really, they're scientific from way back when the scientists were, were exploring how the 
sound affects our bodies. That's what the mantras are. They're refined sound bites. So, when you start to chant these, we, more and more people came. And more and more people had to pay tickets. So more and more money came to us. And it was like, wow, we're paying, people are paying us to... So what we did with that money was, we put it back to making the best music we could, so that the people that came would be nourished. And then we continued this, this circle of, of energy, uh, that it's, it's always in service to that place that's beyond emotion, that's, that's our inner peace. So that was my, that's been my journey. And, and uh, now with Deva, 27 years, 28 years now. So <laughs> we've been sharing this, you know, and it's just, it's grown very organically. No push, no push, no push. Just a, a, a sharing of energy. And, and that's what we continue to do, you know. Then I have a big question for, from myself. When I see you, every time you are shining, you know, like irradiating uh, kindness. And uh, I want to ask you about this energy. How do you, you know, recuperate it? How do you, how do you get it to, to share with other people? Uh, just, uh, it's a gratitude and it's, a blessing and it's a gift. <clears throat> I mean, for me, it's the most beautiful thing to be with Miten, to be with him all the time, to play with him and sing with him, and uh, and to be able to give something to people who come. You know that people come and say, you know, it changed my life. Yesterday after the concert, no, actually at the breakfast in the hotel, somebody came to me. It was nine in the morning. Mm -hmm. And he said, you've you saved my yeah. life. No, yeah, your music, the music you guys make saved my life. You know, like I, and it's not the first time that we've heard that. That's huge, you know, so, so that, that we are having such a great time traveling, singing, playing, being together, and that under others benefit from it too. It's just totally beautiful. So how could we not, if we weren't shining, then like something would be really wrong. I can share for myself uh, that we are the same. I mean, we, our spiritual growth was, was with your music, actually, with your mantras. We were chanting uh, uh, Om Gam Ganapataya 108 times uh, for a long time, every day. And so, and uh, all of these uh, beautiful compositions from Ram Ramaya and others. So it was all, uh, all the time in our car. So, <laughs> so I can definitely confirm that. Beautiful. Thank you. It's, a, it's true. It's a, it's a mystery to us. We, you know, because we, we're playing it for ourselves. We need, we need to, for us, this is how we connect, you know, and so, uh, we need it as much as you need it, and everybody needs it. So when we play together, it's not a performance, it's not something that, it's not a show. It's a circle, you know, it's a cosmic circle, and we just come together. There is no leader, there's no follower. We just begin and we let the music come, and the people contribute in their own way. So everybody is necessary in the audience. We all are responsible for the evening, not, okay, play to me and we'll tell you if we like you, or we'll clap. You know, that's not there. It's, it's we all have responsibility in life, you know, and uh, so we bring that to a gathering like, uh, like this, where the, we're, we're chanting energetic healing formulas and uh, between, you know, between the time we begin and, and the end, the journey in between takes us into us, our, our inner silence again, inner peace. So yeah, that's why we are so happy. Even though we, this morning, just before we came down, we have a very complicated issue happening in our lives and we're talking very intensely <laughs> like this and then as soon as we got into the lift we were we were we just it just goes it's amazing any 
aggravation, it, it just leaves us very fast. Mm -hmm. It's not that we hold on to anything. I think that's a, mm -hmm. that's a big teaching from our guru, our teacher. He was a great teacher. He helped us understand how to be together and how to respect each other's personal spiritual journey, mm -hmm. you know, so that we don't cling, we don't hold, but we celebrate as friends. Mm -hmm. So then we can, uh, we can enjoy each other on, on, a, on a deep level and the mantras and the music, it just makes us uh, happy. Mm -hmm. You know, and a, a deep yeah. happiness, you know, so not happiness, not superficial, but something that sustains us underneath conflict, mm -hmm. underneath misunderstandings, all those things. Underneath, there's, you know, we're human, we, we do our best, and, uh, uh, and uh, we, we respect each other's journey, because there's two different journeys, two different humans. We can go together, but there, uh, you know, we, we know that uh, uh, we, we, were, we came like this apart, and then we came together, and we went together. Who knows? Uh, neither of us are going, you mustn't leave me, you mustn't, we're like this, two, two parallel energies flying, and you, who knows where it goes, you know? But we're very happy that we've had 28 years, and you know, I know from I, I know that if it ends tomorrow, that it would only be gratitude for the journey that we've had, and not nothing else. You know, and uh, and with the, and Deva because she's facing. I'm 70 now, so you know I'm in my 70s. So you know, who knows how long I've got? And Deva, the love that Deva gives me and shares with me is so intense because she. It's not like you guys, you are both about the same age and you, you hope to grow old together. Deva knows she's not going to grow old with me. I'm going to be gone. So that gives us a deeper connection and a deeper love and a, a keeps us awake, you know. So we're very blessed. Thank you very much for this answer. It's, I can feel this sincerity very being here next to you, really. Thanks, thanks a lot. I, uh, speaking of this age, I, I mean, when I was preparing to this interview, I opened the Wikipedia and the first line about Mitten was the, the year when he was born. And so I was pretty much surprised, I must say, uh, because, yeah, being such an active uh, person as you are, and uh, I mean, I can say a lot of good words, but uh, in general, our question is, what are the specific things you eat and drink, probably, mm -hmm. that uh, let you keep on doing that mm -hmm. at this age? Well, I'm, you know, I haven't eaten meat or fish for about 40, 40 years, something like that. It's not in my diet. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think that has helped me. Uh, it's given me a lighter energy. I don't, without taking the the, the, the meat and the fish is, gets stronger. So I look, to, my meditation gives me that strength. It gives me a grounding. Deva is, is super, super conscious about uh, food and diet. You know? Even on the tour? Even on the tour. Even on the tour. We I travel. <laughs> <laughs> no, but she travels with, you know, for instance, for our breakfast, we have, we don't have any anything from the hotel because uh, you know we we have if i have coffee i have my own organic coffee with oat milk so i, I don't like to take too much dairy I, you know i more or less don't eat i haven't eaten eggs and milk and cheese and butter that those kind of things i like to leave away but i need to replace them with good things mm -hmm. not oh god i can't eat you know i don't want to <laughs> eat this oh god i can't eat the cheese but what is there and what Deva and I eat, Deva's never tasted meat, never tasted fish. So, so she has been a huge help to me. Thank you. Or if she wasn't there, I'd be eating French fries all day and, yeah. you know. <laughs> no, I wouldn't, that's okay. <laughs> Coffee and French fries and watching the television, you know. 
Yeah, I think it's very important that you are sharing this also uh, because uh, generally speaking to for the people who are really into society life, I think it's also important to know that we can still be vegetarians mm-hmm. or vegans okay. uh, doing uh, working in a low level energies, let's say it's still possible, right? Mm, absolutely. And again, when you look globally in the planet, we have some we have some responsibility now, you know, so, yeah. Can I also ask you, I'm really interested to know a little bit of your yoga practices, because you tell us about uh, meditations, and uh, can you just give an overview how you do it, when you do it, what time of the day, how long, and so on? What is um, that? It's very personal. <laughs> really? Okay. And, uh, and also it's... Uh, I'm, I, I'm not a yoga, I don't do yoga as yes, such, uh, as you know, as yeah, okay. I, I do some, but I'm, I, I do it mixed in with Pilates and it's not like a strict yoga practice. Mm. <clears throat> My meditation is really singing and chanting okay. together with Miten and, uh, and also to just infuse all of life with joy, you know, like when I'm, when I'm enjoying what I'm doing, I'm in the moment and that it's meditation, that makes it meditation because the whole practice of meditation is being in the moment and what I do really gives me joy, all the aspects of this life. So um, it's a very kind of practical meditation what I do, I don't have much time or take much time to sit silently these days and and I used to and I I know I love it but it's not my focus right now and uh, so for me it's all like one big kind of flowering or service or you know practice or meditation you know and uh, what we do is so it's when we sing together it's so it's so powerful in its meditation, you know, it's like a shortcut into that silent space, which is really amazing. My last question. It's also quite personal, but I'm really eager to know. Uh, There are a lot of musicians around, and some of them can sing nicely, and uh, would uh, compose nice melodies and so on, but they are not in the top league, let's say. And you are definitely there, at least for, for us, for sure, because uh, you can sell millions of uh, uh, albums. And in general, one can feel that this is the top league. How would you distinguish uh, the top league of something, of some business of or in music also? How do people get there? And is there also some something connected to yoga in a way? We have to go back to yoga you know, your first question was about yoga and spirituality and business. And Deva was just explaining the her, the way that she sees our whole life as meditation. So how to get there, you know, and it doesn't just happen. It's like Deva has been meditating for 27 years, even before we met, we were met in an ashram. So you have to begin, you have to make a step and whether you're in business or whatever, you have to make a step towards your own self. And that's a step to say, wait a minute, I'm going to see what happens. Can I sit still and not move and we close my eyes for 20 minutes and not move? You'll find it's very difficult. That's why people don't meditate, mm-hmm. because it's, they've got a million things why they think, why am I sitting here when I could be doing this and this and this? And that's what the mind does. So, the, you know, to get to the space where Dave is talking about, you have to start somewhere. You can't just say, oh, my whole world is going to be meditation. That takes, a, that takes some intense practice. So, you know, uh, it, it, you know, you need to find a place and discipline where you sit and you, or you lay and you absolutely still, even if something is itching, you don't, you don't scratch it. You just lay, let it be there, and create. That creates an energy. So you don't, you you start to look inside, and once you begin to do that, you'll find more and more you don't listen to the mind so much. You start to relax, and it's a deep, relaxed awareness 
That's what we're looking for, a relaxed awareness. That means that we're relaxed, but we're not sleeping. We're not falling asleep, we're still awake. Our eyes are closed and we're deeply relaxed. That's the beginning of, of every businessman's day. Somehow you have to include that. If not, it gets distorted, life gets distorted. If you, so so once, once that begins to happen, you find, I want, oh, it's going to be time soon for my meditation. And that's so important. You need to find that place in your life and you need to find it in a regular day, is in the morning or after lunch or in wherever it is, where you don't fall asleep, but you're a relaxed awareness. And that's once you start to connect with that, then you can live your life, whatever you choose, but you'll start to feel yourself moving in the world, not being a reaction to it, yeah. but actually responding to what, what you see and from a space of inner awareness, you know. But the, how do you get to the top league? That's what he's saying. The top league begins there. Mm -hmm. It begins there, and and uh, that's that's all it is. And, and uh, um, we were lucky to to have been with a living master, uh, a master who understood the power of music and the power of meditation, and so he he helped us to see the real music is born from silence. That's why we begin our concerts in silence, so that this doesn't disturb us, the noise there. It's like we're in our own space. We're breathing, we're just in the moment together, and then Deva can begin. And then we can go on the journey, and then we come back into silence. And we are looking forward for that tonight. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. It was such an interesting interview. Thank you very much. You are talking about happiness, but uh, if I can see your life, you are not really, you are serving, you are making so many things for people, you are not going to the cave or to the forest, you are in society, so you want to share your happiness with the people, but why? Because we need the people, we are not, we are not enlightened, we need this energy. If we didn't need it, we would go to the cave. Mm -hmm. But we are part of the energy. We need this energy sustains us, and it, and by that it sustains others. So, it's it's uh, it's not that we are above that. When we play, we are so nourished. For us, it's like every time we play is like making love. You know, it's like getting in bed with each other, and every night it's the same, and every night it's different. The making love is every same but different every time, and that's how it is with us and the music. We need this is to, uh, if we didn't have it, she'd probably not, didn't like me at all, you know, she was, she was saying, oh, no, no, this old man, no, thank you, you know. And that's because you feel, you feel that uh, you're the part of this, this uh, world around. So you, you feel that you are the part of it, you are not something individual. Yes, we're, we're part yeah. of it, yeah. Try to find this, you know, motivation. People who are doing so much in the world, you know, doing so much, and uh, actually, your life is just giving. You are giving. You so I feel I'm only receiving. I don't. Um, well, yes, it's your feeling. But mm. if you will see from mm. the from the, from yeah. the side, you will yeah. see that actually what you are doing, yeah. you are giving. And that's the, I think the problem right now in the world. Many people just. No, survival, not, survival of fear. Yeah, it's fear. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for explaining. Uh, well, thank you too. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you say about uh, being relaxed and then you can do something. But sometimes to make some project uh, happen, you need like, some energy. Yeah, but it's a different energy. When you're relaxed, the energy is clean. You, you, you cannot not share, you cannot go into your project. But if you go into your project like this, it's a different energy. So I'm going to, this is one energy. The other energy is, what can I give to the project so that I create a it's circle? Focus. It's a clear focus. There's See, no tension. It's mm. about giving. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yes, what do you give to the project? Mm. <laughs> I want to share this with you. Yeah. you, that's it. Good girl. That's the one. <laughs>